Get ahead of postage rate increases this year with Stamps.com. It's like your own personal post office. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com code PROGRAM. The T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. The Tea Biz podcast and blog connect you directly to experts in the tea lands. Listen as their voices reveal the news, innovations, cultural insights, and consumer trends that most impact the industry. Paired with Tea Journey, a digital magazine for tea enthusiasts, the Tea Biz portal is a global resource for everyone who loves tea. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. Kenya and Sri Lanka exports topped $1 billion in 2022. Devalued currencies led to a strong influx of foreign exchange dollars. Tea and coffee may protect against multiple sclerosis. An unusually hot summer is predicted for India. Plus, this week, TBiz correspondent Jessica Natalie Woolard visits Alaska, where tea maker Jenny C. uses geothermal energy to warm a cozy greenhouse where she grows her tea. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Keilani Valley, Telawakili, Boga Wanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka exported 250 million kilos of tea in 2022, down 13% in volume compared to 2021, the lowest export volume since 1997. Foreign exchange earnings nonetheless top $1.2 billion due to an average unit price of $5.03 per kilo FOB, a $0.40 cent per kilo increase compared to 2021. Earnings of 411 billion rupees set a record, but were valued at 65.7 million less than in 2021 when Sri Lanka sold 1.32 billion worth of tea. In Kenya, commodity prices improved enough to generate 1.07 billion from tea exports as volume declined 19% for the year. The value of tea exports in 2022 grew 1.5% to 138 billion shillings, despite an increase in volume to 450 million kilos, thanks to a weakened currency. The Tea Board of Kenya reported the average price at auction jumps 18.6% to $2.49 per kilo last year, as the Kenyan shilling fell in value by 9% against the U.S. dollar. In 2022, Sri Lanka exported tea to 148 countries, with 52% destined for North Africa and the Middle East. In 2022, Russia and the surrounding CIS countries accounted for 17% of export volume. The UK and Europe accounted for 10%. Countries in Asia, mainly China, bought 9%. North and South Americans bought 6%, Japan and Australasia 4%, and Central Africa 2%. Tea production in almost all producer countries declined in 2022 versus 2021, with Sri Lanka recording the steepest decline of 48 million kilos year on year. Business Insight Kenya benefited from reduced supplies and higher black tea prices in 2022 as output dropped in competing Sri Lanka and grew in India. 
Kenya remains the world's biggest exporter of black tea, but the largest markets for Kenyan tea in 2022 were Pakistan and Egypt. Together, they bought three-quarters of Kenya's exports. Trading volume and partners will change in 2023. Shipments bound for Pakistan are stranded in the port of Karachi as the country barters rice for tea, while Egypt is ensnared in a worsening economic crisis. Green tea has shown some benefit in gait and balance in people with multiple sclerosis, but the impact of drinking green and black tea on MS development has never been studied. Researchers in Iran recently published a study suggesting that drinking black and green tea, coffee, and non-alcoholic beer makes it significantly less likely that individuals will develop multiple sclerosis symptoms. The research, published in the peer-reviewed Journal of Health, Population, and Nutrition, was reported by Multiple Sclerosis Today. MS occurs when the immune system mistakenly attacks the protective coating around the nerve fibers that helps them send electric signals, resulting in a range of symptoms. Several risk factors contribute to MS, including genetics, history of infections, and demographic factors such as sex and race. Lifestyle habits such as smoking and consuming a high-fat diet are also believed to play a role in MS onset. To determine the relationship between different beverages and MS, researchers conducted a case control study involving 146 MS patients followed at an Iranian hospital and 277 age match controls. Control participants were selected from the ophthalmology ward of the hospital. Drinking 500 grams or more of tea daily reduced the likelihood of developing MS symptoms by 80%. Drinking at least 16 grams a day of green tea also lowered the risk by 71%. People who reported drinking non-alcoholic beer were 52% less likely to develop MS, but the greatest effects were observed for coffee, which lowered that likelihood by 93%. Based on the results, participants who reported no coffee consumption were 14.5 times more likely to develop MS than those who drank coffee. Consuming soft drinks had the greatest association, increasing the likelihood of developing the condition by 16.2 times. Other drinks, such as milk and natural fruit juices, increased that likelihood significantly as well by 5.5 and 2.5 times, respectively. The results require further study, but the team noted that beverages that contain high levels of polyphenols, which have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, may reduce the activation of the immune system and protect the nervous system. India's Meteorological Department, IMD, forecasts higher than normal heat wave days over the tea lands in northwest India during the second flush harvest from April to June. Conditions favor good rainfall activity over northwest and central India in April. El Nino conditions may develop from July to September as the La Nina weakens. According to IMD, sea temperatures are neutral, but El Nino may develop from around the monsoon and extend into the fall season. India experienced a 55% increase in deaths due to extreme heat between 2000 and 2004 and again in, in 2017 and 2021 according to a study published in the medical journal The Lancet. Exposure to heat also caused the loss of 167 billion potential labor hours in 2021 alone, resulting in a loss of income. Researchers cited in The Lancet article analyzed temperatures in 103 countries and concluded that heat waves are becoming longer, more intense, and more frequent. Conditions are directly linked to changing climate. 
India's scorching sun causes dehydrated birds to fall from the sky at 40C and Gujarat. But cities along the East Coast and inland, such as Chennai, face the greatest danger due to high humidity and wet bulb temperatures. These can quickly kill. Wet bulb temperature is calculated as a combination of heat and humidity. Around 97 degrees Fahrenheit or 36 degrees Celsius, sweat cannot evaporate, and the human body can no longer cool itself down. Tea bushes thrive in high humidity, but tea workers cannot pluck or do field work under these conditions. Arvinda Anantharaman in Bengaluru reports on this week's tea auction prices. India tea price report for sale 12 for the week ending 25th March 2023. This week, an action taken report was presented in the parliament on the 23rd of March. This follows from the Parliamentary Committee's uh, report on issues affecting the Indian tea industry, especially in Darjeeling. One of the things that came up was that the Directory General of Trade Remedies has not yet received a written application from the Indian tea industry on the dumping of tea from Nepal, and without this, it cannot initiate an anti-dumping investigation. On action taken, the report states that uh, stringent requirements for the Certificate of Origin on Nepal tea imports will be raised in the next review meeting of the India-Nepal Trade Treaty. And another point was that the Department of Commerce has requested the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India to allow the import of tea from Nepal only at three land custom stations, which are Jogbani, Panitanki and Raksol. And here, the FSSAI has trained custom officials to strengthen the food import clearance of tea. In auctions, the Bharat auction was piloted in North India. The total offerings in demand was low, and uh, while orthodox saw fair demand, only about 10% sold for over 200 rupees a kilo. And there will, there will be no sale 13 in North India this week due to insufficient tea. South India saw sale 12 with about 2,800 tons of tea on offer. And the orthodox grades did well. The sale volume of 99% and an average price of 170 per kilo. And in weather, Assam received rainfall across the state last week, which was a big relief. Upper Assam is predicted to see cloudy weather with rain and thunderstorm this week. And heavy rainfall is also predicted in Darjeeling, Kalimpong, and parts of the Terai on the 1st and 2nd of April. C. Shen in Beijing reports on domestic tea prices compiled by 17 associations of growers of traditional Chinese tea varietals. Qingming is around the corner, and China is marching into full production this spring tea season, with most regions now harvesting tea. Cooler weather is a factor, with unusually intense thunderstorms in Fuding and Zunyi that damaged white tea and green tea. The full spring harvest has begun on March the 28th for Huangshan Maofeng and was delayed by six days compared with last year. This year, we saw a significant increase in fresh tea prices for traders and tea processors for Huangshan Maofeng, about 40 to 60 percent. Luan Guapian started harvesting on April the 3rd, reached the second level of picking period, meaning a small amount can be picked. Nationwide, the number of tea pickers almost meets the demand for tea picking. Except in Xinchang area, where labor scarcity is slightly insufficient. Domestic prices for Westlake Dragon Well in Hangzhou, Zhejiang, ranged from US $450.62 to $595.98 for 500 grams. Biluochun Spiral Spring Green in Suzhou and Jiangsu ranged from a low of US $581.45 to $1,235.98 
$1.58 for 500 grams. And Huangshan Maofeng, harvested in Huangshan, Anhui, averaged US $130.86 to $261.72 per 500 grams. The price of tea is affected by many factors, region, variety, and quality, to name a few. Prices vary by sales channel and fluctuate due to supply, consumer demand, and merchant stocks. This is Si Chen reporting from Beijing, China. 下期再见，茶友们。And now a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Nish. I grew up in an organic tea farm and founded Nepal Tea Collective in 2016. Tea is not just a beverage for me, but a catalyst for social change, sustainably empowering hardworking artisans like my parents for the past 30 years. I'm on a mission to make the whole world aware of the goodness of Nepali teas and the good that comes from supporting growers in this remarkable land. If you haven't tasted Nepali teas yet, you're missing out. Our award-winning teas are making headlines. Find out why. Visit Nepal Tea Collective's website to get a free sample of this extraordinary taste of the Himalayas. That's nepalteacollective.com, or just send me an email at nish. N I S H at NepalTeaCollective dot com. Cheers. This week, Tea Biz correspondent Jessica Natalie Woolard visits Alaska, where tea maker Jenny C is using geothermal energy to warm a cozy greenhouse where she grows her tea. In Fairbanks, Alaska, Jenny C of Sipping Streams is doing it all: blending and processing tea, manufacturing pyramid tea bags, and producing hot chocolate, bubble tea, honey, and kombucha. She wild forages Alaskan botanicals to use in her tea blends. One of which was award-winning at the North American Tea Championships. She also has a podcast, an extensive tea education program, through which she takes groups to visit tea farms around the world. If that were not enough, Jenny decided to try growing her own tea in Alaska using geothermal energy. Let's chat with Jenny to find out how it's going. So, you're growing Camellia sinensis in Alaska. What was the eureka moment? That made you realize that you might be able to circumvent the climate and grow tea in Fairbanks, a city with the claim to fame of being the coldest large city in the United States. Wow, I've never heard it quite put that way before. But now that you say, I was like, hmm, it does seem like a daunting task. This journey began during COVID when I had to cancel all of、um, our like upcoming tea tour. Plans for going over to Africa with the anniversary of our tea education program. I gifted all of my tea students a tea plant, so they had received their own Camellia sinensis plant because I couldn't take them to go see tea plants overseas. So many students started asking me when I was going to start my own tea farm. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to start a tea farm. Are you crazy? Not because of the climate, but because. I'm a tea company that is a manufacturer. So my husband, who is very logical and technical, was like, "Okay, so, but what would it take to start a tea farm in Alaska?" So I told my husband, "Well, the only place I can think of in the whole state of Alaska is at Sheena Hot Springs Resort, where our friend Bernie Carl owns that resort."、Mm-hmm. And then he said, "Yes, let's do it." And I'm like, "Oh man, I'm going to start a tea farm." Great story. From where did you source your tea plants, and how did you select them? So our tea plants are from Camellia sinensis、um, forest or nursery, and that's from North Carolina. So Christine Parks, when I, I was very impressed with her book and how scientific she was, because my background is in science, in health and wellness, I had read her book. 
grow your tea. And it was like tea publication of the year. I had read it on several people's blogs and I'm like, wow, this person like doesn't just have a nursery, but she actually does research. Now I have to find tea plants. Let me ask what kind of varietal she could have um, send us to try it out. And so it was very interesting because she gave us cold climate teas like Sochi varietals or Chinese varietals that could withstand cold weather. But what ended up happening with the struggle of the tea farm is that it's too warm. (laughs) So it's kind of a strange operation to have when you have like excess of heat, like excess of access to heat. And they don't want to be that warm year round. So we learned that um, the first year, maybe we should have gotten tropical plants. So we haven't gotten hotter region types of varieties yet. Fascinating. You're going to learn a lot. (laughs) How are you hoping to incorporate the Alaskan grown tea into your tea line at Sipping Streams? So at first we have already like experimented with hand rolling the tea, just making a green tea or just making a white tea, like very low processing of it. Um, just because it's very micro batches. And so right now we've just been experimenting with it and like serving free cups of tea to like people at special events, fundraisers, at agricultural fairs, completely for free, just to see what people think about the tea. Some of the ideas that we're having is to possibly make a kombucha with it. So more people could have access to it because we make our own canned kombucha right now. and. And another idea of our kombucha was to make jun kombucha from Alaskan fireweed honey because we process a lot of honey also here locally. And that's the million dollar question. How do the leaves taste? Oh my gosh, they taste amazing. I haven't quite figured out because we don't have them sent to the lab or, or anything like that to know like the micro components, you know, the components in the plant and why it tastes like that. It was super smooth. Like the first steeping is like, eh, you know, like in the Chinese tea ceremony, you kind of throw it away. The second one was like, whoa, this is really strong. And then the third one was like even more creamy. We just need to make more of this now. You didn't set out in your career to study tea. You came to it organically. Would you say that finding tea was a kind of homecoming for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I didn't realize how much it was going to transform my life. Well, I'm an immigrant. I was born in Hong Kong and I was raised in Fairbanks, Alaska here. And I grew up as a coffee drinker. Growing up, our grandparents would take turns, sets of grandparents would take turns coming up here and taking care of us. And they never invited us to have tea with them. But it was part of their morning ritual was Tai Chi tea ceremony and a walk. And my, my grandparents would not actually have the tea ceremony with each other. They would use it as a space for themselves. So when I started discovering tea in college, my last year of college studying sports medicine, I only started drinking it because it was the cheapest thing on the menu at the coffee shop. And so people asked me questions, but my, my path, my career path was going into health and wellness. So lots of people asked me about tea and I didn't know anything. Uh, I didn't even know tea had health benefits. (laughs) Um, So going through my own personal tea journey definitely was a homecoming into my own cultural identity, understanding where I came from, the history of my heritage. It's very fascinating to now have a story to understand that and who I am as a person, but it's my own tea journey. Everyone has their own journey of how they get into tea. And what a journey she is on. You can follow along with Jenny's adventures in all things tea at sippingstreams.com. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts? Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week.
What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. Hero also drops other limited edition ultra low net carb goodies like rich flaky croissants and buttery brioche slider rolls. Head to hero.co to shop today.